missed them. Here they are. Eh, they're gone now. You can't turn any further of me off the road. <laughs> bought a bulk order of notebooks recently and they got here and I'm gonna go ahead and open it um let's see there we go that's the that's the box sorry if it's wibbly wobbly but let's go ahead and open it and see what we're working with um a lot of the reviews so it's a, it's supposed to be like mixed colors but a lot of the reviews said they got like nothing but the same color so I'm hoping that's not the case, but we'll see. I'm hoping I got a healthy mix of all the colors. It looks like they come in packages of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. It looks like they come in packages of five, which is awesome. Um, and this is supposed to be... How many is it supposed to be total? Hold on, I gotta have to check. It's supposed to be 48. So, I don't know how many that is of five, but they're supposed to be 48 of them. Anyways, or is there supposed to be 48? I hope there's not supposed to be 48 of five. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Now, if there is five in each of these, 10 times five is actually since oh not 48 but 50 so let's see one two three four five five and it looks like they are a mix so five so far it looks like there's five in every one of these packs and five okay so there is five in each pack so okay so i got 50 now but it's not 48 which is awesome i will take that um, let's open up one of these packs and see if we got all five colors. So there's supposed to be a range of like five colors. All right, so got yellow, blue, green, red, and I think this is supposed to be pink, but it looks kind of like a pinkish purple to me. We're going to call it pink. These are college bound, college ruled, which is my favorite because I have big handwriting. I do not need wide ruled. I need college ruled, which is really hard to find in stores right now um, because wide ruled is extremely popular with the composition notebooks. Of course, it's got the typical class program schedule in the front, which I don't use. It's got useful information in the back with conversions and stuff like that. And it is 100 sheets, 200 pages. These are small enough to fit in my bag, which is part of the reason I like them. Plus, they're not spiral bound, which means I don't have to worry about ruining any, ruining any rings. So these overall are some of my favorite notebooks to use. Plus, they're extremely cheap. Um, because I bought a bulk older, they were like... Uh, they came out to like $1.60 per notebook, roughly. They, I think they were a little cheaper than that because I think the price has gone up a little bit since I purchased these. But... Um, yeah, I have, I now have 50 notebooks, so I won't be running out of notebooks anytime soon. And I already, what I tend to use these for is I write my short stories in them. I might get to the point where I start writing novel, novellas and stuff in them only if like a sh an idea sparks that was originally supposed to be a short story it becomes a novella and I just finish it in the notebook. But for the most part, it's going to be for short stories. Um, and the reason I wanted so many is because I don't want to like say a short story is only going to take me... 20 pages to write and then I get to that 20th page and I've started another story and I'm like I didn't I didn't give myself enough room so basically I will have a short uh, a notebook for every short story and then once that short story is complete I will write the next short story in it until the notebook is full but the other thing I want to do is I used to keep what I call junk journals and that was basically for me to write out my thoughts on everything and anything no matter what it was about and I've still got like three or four of those that I previously did, which I can do a flip through in the future um, for a for future video if you're interested. But um, they uh, they are really helpful. I use them basically the way some people are currently using morning pages. So in a way, I was doing morning pages long before I ever 
really know what morning pages was it's just I wasn't using it in the same way because I was not giving myself like I wasn't doing it daily I wasn't giving myself a three page count that morning pages requires I was basically if I had an idea and I wanted to get the thoughts out of my head I just wrote about it and it helped me work through financial issues it helped me work through personal uh, personal feelings it helped me work through my thoughts on various things and it was just a good way of releasing whatever thoughts were in my brain at the time. So that's what these are going to be used for. These are going to be used for short stories, they're going to be used for junk journals. One of the things I'm doing currently as I'm updating my notion with my reading logs, I am tracking multiple years of reading logs from 2013 to now. And so like I'm trying to keep everything up to date and I've been using a spiral bound that I stole from work basically. Um, but again, I've been smashing this and it doesn't quite fit in my backpack the way I would like so I'm going to transfer all the information I've written in this notebook to uh, I think this one is red yes this one is red because I was starting to do YouTube related stuff in it so I think we're gonna start with the red one and I'm gonna transfer all of the information from this notebook and see here's the size difference like this fits perfectly in my bag this is actually too big and I have to it has to sit kind of curled like this in order to fit in my bag just the top portion curls but after a while this will start bending it or it'll make it so I can't zip up my backpack so I'm gonna transfer everything from this this notebook to this notebook and I think this will be my first junk journal so and then when I fill this up I'll move on to the next one and I don't know what color I will because I will use up all five of these before I open a new pack and now I need to find a home for these that's the only problem with ordering bulk orders is now I got to find space for them. I may have a problem. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I'm at work and uh, I just had a hot damn moment because I'm on my break. It's my last break of the night. And I was like, I just want to do a little bit of reading. And if you're new to this channel, you might not know, but... I absolutely love Mercedes Lackey, my favorite book. You know how most people can't pick a favorite book? They have to pick like top five, top 10, stuff like that. No, not for me. I have a favorite book and it is Magic's Pawn by Mercedes Lackey. I've read a lot of Mercedes Lackey books. I have actually not ever finished any of the series in the Voldemort universe. Uh, someday I might, but honestly, I don't, I don't think I will. But, uh, I do love Mercedes Lackey and I do love, I love having paperback copies because of the artwork that Larry Dixon does in Mercedes Lackey books. Um, but that being said, I downloaded a sample of Beyond the Founding of Voldemort, which is the first book in the Founding of Voldemort series. And uh, I, I, I go back and I check to see if there's like a dedication because those always interest me. I always find dedications and acknowledgements very fascinating, no matter what the book is. Plus, I'm very weird in the fact that I hate that Kindle books start on like chapter one and sometimes skip very important information that an author might put in their stuff. But uh, here is the, the I'm not going to read the whole dedication, but it has, it's, it's super long. But I do want to read the last portion of it. And I definitely, this is what gave me the hot damn feeling because... It's intense. And it says, And finally, this work is also dedicated in furious disgust to ridding our world of the influence of everyone complicit in using the pandemic as a tool for their own power, profits, and political maneuvering. You pushed hateful agendas while the bodies were stacked up. We all lost people dear to our hearts because of you parasitic, heartless creatures. If you had souls, you'd be damned. <gasps> The fuck? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> oh, Jesus! So yeah, um, I will be purchasing this book. I will be reading this book. Um, I love the idea behind Voldemort. I love the companions. It just, oh, I cannot wait. Usually I do a reread of Magic's Pawn every year, and for the past couple of years, I just haven't because I've been reading so much other stuff. I've gotten off that bandwagon, but 
I'm gonna read this trilogy. I've got the second book. I think I got the second book when there was like a sale and it was on sale for like $1.99. I don't, that's the only thing I can think of because I don't have the first one or the third one in this particular trilogy. Um, usually Mercedes Lackey writes, the. there's a bunch of different series in the Voldemort world. Excuse me. She tends to write a bunch of trilogies and standalones in this particular world. There's also, I think there is now an actual series, but I don't know if it's a series of anthologies or if it's an actual series. And those are the books I definitely have not gotten. And it's the Collegium Chronicles, I believe. There's like 20 something books in that series. But again, I don't know if it's actual series of individual novels and stuff or if it's a bunch of anthologies. I thought it was anthologies, but I could be very wrong about that. So, and I'm not gonna lie, if I ever had the opportunity to write in the Voldemort world, I would jump on that horse so fast it's not even funny. <sighs> I would love to write in the Voldemort world. Dream goals, dream goals. I did a video once where I actually talked about like all big author dream goals. If I uh, if I remember to, I'll link in the description. Um, I need to go back and rewatch that because honestly, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see if any of those goals have changed in the past couple of years because I think I made that video a few years ago. But yeah, excuse me. I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy this book. I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling for multiple reasons, but. Yeah, I just wanted to read that portion of the dedication to you. Puppies are cute as always. Yum, 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 there, there's multiple reasons for that. Um, the first is that I haven't had a lot to update on because I've been writing here and there, but I haven't been doing anything consistently and I haven't been working on any of the projects. I had a story bug hit me because I read a book that I just, I hated it, I hated it. Uh, and it wasn't a bad book. The premise was actually very intriguing. But the way it was executed, the characters were acting like stupid fucking teenagers instead of, like, and I mean like the stupidest of stupid fucking teenagers, instead of grown ass adults in a midlife crisis. And that was the whole point of this, the book was that this woman was having a midlife crisis and she was changing job careers, but it was executed so fucking poorly in every decision she made. It just, it, it read, <clears throat> you might know what it read like. Okay, you know how some people go back and read their writing from when they were like a teenager, and I mean a young teenager, and what they think, how they think that adults act? When, you know when you're writing something as a young teenager and you write an adult character and that's how you perceive them? That's how this was written. It was so bad. Anyways, um, and because of that, I was like, this is how I would do it if I did it. And it was... It, that's how it started. Um, the story idea was just, I was like, I'm going to write a short story that is like how this should have been. Like how these uh, uh, characters would have acted if, it, they'd, if they'd acted like fucking adults instead of t a teenager's perception of an adult. And I mean a young teenager's perception of an adult. So um, that's what the story idea started off with. And then it took a turn and it was completely different. I was like, oh, well, I guess the rage is gone. <laughs> It was just a way for me to work out my rage about how bad this book was uh, while keeping a basic premise of the same story. But anyways, uh, it's one of those things where it'll, it'll never get published. Um, I haven't even finished it yet, but I did run out of steam and I was just like, oh, rage is gone. I guess I'm good. <laughs> Every once in a while that happens. Do you guys do that? Do you guys like you read something that you hate so much and you're like, this is how I do it. If I was going to do it and you, you write your own version of the, basically the same plot, not necessarily for anyone to read, just for yourself to feel like a sense of validation. Like I, I need to know that I'm not the only one that does this, <laughs> but, uh, that's the only writing I've actually been doing because, uh, I, I posted, I, I have a clip on here probably where I showed that I got my bulk order of notebooks in because I do, I've t mentioned it a couple times that I want to do more handwriting. And I've got a couple different notebooks going right now because I started writing a hand, st I started writing, let's see, this notebook. Okay, so this notebook has a buckshort in it, which is a short story 
dealing with a, a witch who has no powers. She comes from a long line of witches who do have powers and her mother does something that affects her normal human life like for good and it's in retaliation she does end up getting magic which she hates because she's lived most of her life without magic and all of a sudden she has to learn magic and then she also gets a familiar her family has been very very um along with being from a long line of witches she every one of the witches in her family has a black cat for a familiar and she discovers not only does she have magic because her mom does this spell it's ruined her normal human life outside of magic like there's consequences to spe magic that you do for others and this was the consequence it it ruined her life her dream life um that she has built for herself without magic and then um she now has a familiar that is a deer so that's what this short story is about and i'm about three quarters of the way through it I've written this much but but I also want to be able to write other stories in conjunction because like there is the podcast anthology anthology I finally gave up and just started typing that and we'll get to that in a second because I do have an update on that but I have another notebook where I was writing another short story and basically what will happen is I'll have three or four notebooks going at one time each with its own short story and then like when I finish the short story in this one I will write the next short story in this one however I didn't want to start writing the next short story in this one until a buck short is finished because of the fact that I don't know how much more how many more pages I'm going to need for a buck short so once I finish a buck short then I'll write the next short story I'll start a new short story in here but in the meantime if I have an idea for a short story I want to start it into like this one's not written in but as an example a completely new notebook and then I'll just have like three or four notebooks in rotation that way. Weird, I know, but it works for me. The other thing I used to do is I used to keep what I call junk journals. And essentially what that is, is um, it's a place where I write down everything and anything as I think of it. And it's where I used to do a lot of my like, this is my plan for future writing projects. This is my um, plan for future YouTube videos. Like it was... It was similar to morning pages in its own way. Um, and morning pages, for those who don't know, come the idea of morning pages comes from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, I believe. And as a side note, I absolutely hate that book. Um, it felt like a big giant infomercial, basically. And um, it, it just... It, it read like a big giant infomercial and I absolutely hated it. Like I was like, can we get to the meat of the actual story? Like instead of you telling me all the ways this project, this, this will like bring joy to my life. Can you actually just tell me the things that will make it bring joy to my life kind of thing? I was just, I was annoyed and I did not finish it. I will eventually because I, I want to read it. I want to know why everyone hypes this book up, but oh my God, it was just so tedious. Anyways, past that. So junk journals for me were basically notebooks in which I just basically wrote down any and all thoughts as they came to me, kind of like morning pages. And I turned one of my new notebooks into that. And so far, the only thing listed in it is a bunch of like YouTube video ideas, which I had started putting in another notebook, but I wanted to condense that and some other information I was writing in another, an, another notebook into one place. So that's what I started doing. So right now this just has YouTube video ideas listed. I've used up this many pages. And currently right now is I'm going through all of my short stories and I'm writing down the list of short stories that I've written since 2004. Um, I've actually sort of kind of not exactly got them separated by year. Currently right now my list says 2004 to 2007 because those are stories where I still have the... And, and this is just the short stories I still have access to. There are many more I've lost throughout the years either because they were written in notebooks that I no longer have or because they were typed on an older computer that I no longer have access to. So those stories are not listed. These are just the ones I have access to. And I categorize them by year until uh, about like last year. And that's where I start categorizing them a little differently. But the way I've got it categorized is all the stories I wrote from like 2004 to 2007. Then I got 2008, 2009, 2010 has the most short stories because I was doing a short story a week for a writing experiment, which I do want to do again. 
And then we skip from 2010. There was no short stories written in 2011, apparently, and I wrote short, it's a couple in 2012. And I'm currently, I've got, I've got this paper where I wrote down other stories that I have in a file that's just labeled short stories. However, that file was created in 2021, and all the short stories say, when I go back and look at the history, they all say they were created in, on the same day in 2021, which tells me that they were in other documents, and I just moved them to that file. So I've got to figure out what year these were all written. So I've got this handy dandy chart where I wrote down the different years and I started situating stories on when I think I wrote them, but I'm probably just going to create another category like the 2004 to 2007 where it says 2014 to 2020, 2020. Because after 2020, I started giving a new writing tracker where I have all the stories I wrote listed on that writing tracker. So I think I'll just categorize the short stories from 2014 and I actually I might change it to 2012 because some of these stories I think were written in 2012 but I'll categorize it from 2012 to 2020 and then the new way I'm categorizing stories is a lot of the short stories I'm doing now besides like a buck short and all the stories that I'm writing in notebooks they're all like series so I've got a bunch of series of short stories that I'm doing and instead of writing those as like I don't want to split the series up because like some of them I started last year like with or in 2021 actually I wrote the first draft of Monster's Treasure in 2021 for the anthology that it's in and now several years later no actually I wrote that one sorry Presumed Dead was the one I wrote in 2021 for the anthology that came out in 2021 wrong story but now I'm working on a full series I have kind of added I've added new scenes to Presumed Dead I've done the, all this stuff and now I have a series that goes along with it, but the series is probably not going to be finished this year. I'm working on it, I'm trying, but it's probably not going to be finished this year. So I've got, I've, I've been working on it in 2021, I've been working on it this year in 2024, and I'll be working on it next year in 2025 before I publish it. So instead of like putting the same story in all three of those years, what I will do is I, in, if it's a standalone short story, like a buck short, I will list it under the year 2024. Otherwise, I'll have a separate category and I'll have those categories by the series. So like, Presumed Dead will fall under Sultry Solstices instead. And then I'll have like a side note that says originally published in Summer Solstice Seduction. So that's the plan with the junk notebook. I'm still working on it, still updating it. And then I will go from there, basically. Once I have all the short stories categorized. And I still feel like I'm missing short stories. So I've got, you're actually, the stand for the, that my phone is on is currently on the notebook I want to look through, but I have one more notebook I want to look through that has the rest of my papers that I still have to digitize. And I actually now feel bad because I've done all these videos about story ideas and I'm pretty certain there's some more story ideas in there that I needed to add to my list. Oh well. Maybe I'll do one of those videos every year where instead of talking about the stories as a whole, I will refer back and be like, if you want more information about this particular series, check out said video. But here's the updated version and just list the ones I've already said in the past with just descriptions of new ones. Maybe that'll be an annual thing or a biannual thing. I don't know. We're going to not biannual. Every two year kind of thing. We'll see. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. But in the meantime, that's actually what all I've been working on this week is I've been handwriting that short story for not handwriting I've been typing that short story I've been working okay bog anthology so if you've been living on a rock Nicole for Thomas is putting together an anthology for youtubers author tubers called the bog hag anthology I love the idea I love the premise it's coming out I think stories are due finalized stories are due by October 15th and I did write my short story originally I was gonna try to finish a book short and write it in this notebook I wrote it in another notebook and then I transcribed it The stories are supposed to be 5,000 words long, or less. I cannot get my short story under 15K. Uh, the first draft was 20K, uh, not 15K, 12K. The first draft was 20K, the second draft was around 14, 15K, 14 to 15K, and now it is hovering around 12K. I cannot write a 5K story to save my fucking life anymore. I used to, because remember how I mentioned the short story? Um, writing experiment that I did in 2010 where I wrote a short story a week. Yeah, all of those, I think the longest story is 3,000 words. So I used to be able to write short stories that long. 
or that short. Cannot do it now to save my life. So I am going to be contacting Nicole um, probably shortly after filming this clip and being like, hey, I hate to do this, but I am going to go ahead and drop from the anthology. I just, there's no way it's going to happen. Because I love the story idea I did. But it is not short enough to go in this anthology. I will just save that project for another anthology that allows longer pieces. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. It's just annoying to me. So yeah, I have given up on the Bog Anthology itself. I've not given up on that story, just on the anthology itself. Uh, I will tweak that story until I feel like it's finished. I will continue working on a buck short, which I haven't worked on in a hot second, actually. I think the beginning of September was the last time I worked on it. So I'm Whenever the last vlog where I mentioned that I was handwriting it for a week, that was the last time I worked on it. Um, and then... I'm going to update this junk journal. I'm going to label it. I've got four older junk journals that I need to look through and see what's in there because, um, just because I'm curious, because the first page of my, any junk journal, I reserve as like a table of contents so I can see what all is in, at a quick glance, what all is in the notebook. But like the first page is already full and I only save one full page front and back. So, and only uh, where's the only so far this much of the book has been used so I've still got all of that so that's gonna be fun I've got to figure out I, I've never actually used more than one front page back so probably as I start using it as the actual junk journal with my like thoughts and stuff I apologize for Jester barking she is outside barking at the deer um, I guess, but after, well, after I finish updating the short story list, I will start using this for like musings and I will do it like, like a, like morning pages where I just write out my thoughts daily and, and always where writing is concerned, not life concerns. So that's my plan moving forward. That's what I've done so far this week. And that's pretty much it. That's all I've done this week. It's actually a lot when you think about it, especially since I was transcribing information from other, from two other spiral bound notebooks into this notebook. So it's, it was a lot of information, but I'm still working on that project. So once I'm hoping to finish that project, we have 4-H later today. We have a 4-H meeting at 2 p.m. It is 10.30 in the morning. So I'm hoping to actually get this portion of it done before that meeting. And yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how much more I can accomplish. Anyways, I will see you all in next week's vlog. Hopefully I will have some more video clips for you guys that are, have more information and more updates. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here and go see if I can get Jester to come inside so she can quit barking or whatever she's barking. I'll see you next week, Dragonlings. Bye. <laughs>